Good. How are you today? I'm I'm good, and it was a beautiful Easter yesterday. Yes, well, the day before yesterday. Although today does feel like a Monday. <laughs> okay, what are you wearing? It's beautiful. Oh, it's a a shirt that my son got when when he was in the Philippines, and my son David and his wife, and it's a beaded shirt. I seeing the scarf that you have around the top oh well it's just a scarf oh, it looks with the pins yeah it looks so anyway it's fun <laughs> so you had a beautiful easter day yeah easter is an important day in our in the life of our family because um when we were when the children were small and we were living on Lafayette, just on the street from you guys. Mm -hmm. On Easter Sunday, we would get up really early and we'd go to South Mountain and for the Easter sunrise service that we, our own little community there, created. And it was wonderful because South Mountain is an unknown uh, place for a lot of people. And according to my son, Bob, it's the largest, uh, what is it? Municipal natural. Municipal park. What? Municipal park. M municipal park in the world. It's larger than the one in New York City. And um, nobody pays much attention to it because it's just old stuff. But for <laughs> when you want to, uh, go around and see old stuff. There are buildings that are uh, run down things that we used to kind of uh, say, wonder what this was, you know? And uh, so because the, the, the buildings that Native Americans had made and that kind of stuff, we, like dwellings? Yeah, those are maybe even before that. You know, what were they? They were just ancient, ancient buildings. Wow. And so we used to just conjure up things, but it was a wonderful place to watch the sun come mm. up. And and then we'd bring uh, our breakfast there, and then we'd and the kids would run around, and it was just a great way to start the uh, the Easter service. And um, so it, you know, um, uh, it's nice to have a sort of a um, high point in your uh, in your in your stru stretch for uh, love and life and hope and we kind of did that on Easter Sunday up on South Mountain but I think South Mountain is just a great place and then after that we'd come down and the Africa uh, the uh, um, Oh, the fire, the uh, the gardens of the uh, Japanese gardens with all of those flowers were a slide road. It was absolutely gorgeous. Hmm. I don't remember that we ever went to South Mountain. Well, <laughs> I mean, we certainly climbed Camelback Mountain all the time, but uh, yeah, I don't know that we ever well, did that people don't talk about South Mountain much, but it's one of those kind of <clears throat> um, sacred places that um, some are fine to kind of um, sort of do things that are special mm -hmm. for your own special group or something like that, because everybody doesn't know about it. And so did you do that? that with just your family or you had a particular spiritual group that you were working you know all of your people right the ARE clinic mm. was uh, the group that we were with and uh, they were you know part of our community and it was not it wasn't a small community I, there must have been a couple hundred people wow and this would have been in the 70s 60s? Yeah, well, oh, uh, 
it's from definitely 60s, 70s, and into the 80s. But um, yeah, those were going on. on the, so there are people uh, who to this day will call me and, and say, remember when we did the Easter sunrise services? And, <laughs> and you know, we just did what we wanted to do. Yeah. And uh, there was no structure to them. Uh, except as we chose. So <laughs> anyway, those are good memories, good memory lane that uh, that we did. And then, then I had the joy of having seven of my children here to see me on Easter, and that was just lovely. Grandchildren. Well, two grandchildren, but... Um, uh, David, David and Lee, and uh, Jesse and Connor, and then uh, D David's friend from Australia Ooh, uh, was here. They were friends. They used they tra traveled around uh, Europe when they graduated from high school, and they spent the summer traveling around Europe. Um, and the two of them had a great summer, yeah. <laughs> David and Doe. You know, so the, these were really uh, great memory lane times that, that we had yesterday. That's so nice. Linda saying it was a beautiful photo you put up on your Instagram of your family. Oh, That's, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. It's so, so to me that you know, we grew up a block away from, I grew up a block away from you. Yeah. And that you, that are, that you were never, my parents never connected to you. Yeah. It's interesting that time, because at that time they were, I don't know what they were doing, but they were just trying to be parents and, you know, working. And we were part of an Episcopal church that was over off of Lincoln, over in Paradise Valley. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, well, and, we were in a sort of a divided community. And, yeah. And, so and we, with, with us in our, our practice of medicine and, and Valley Presbyterian and all of that, we're just... But then you had your sister right. was with us all, all right. the time. <laughs> yeah, so it just, it's so interesting to me that, you know, it wasn't until we moved away from Arizona that my parents started getting more interested in more metaphysical things, more natural ways of healing. It was, <laughs> it took them to, I, yeah, it's just interesting. So I'm, I'm happy to have closed the loop. Yes. Back to, back to the well, <laughs> your sister spent so much time with Helene, right. and Helene spent time up at your house. I never did get up to your right. house. Right. Yeah, it's just, it's, <laughs> it's, it's, we all do what we, we do. Yeah, but... we're busy. We're busy living our lives, and it was a great time to be alive. Yeah, it absolutely was. It was a great neighborhood to grow up in. Yeah. And it's, it's still a great time. <laughs> yes. Yes, yes. So, so, oh, go ahead. So tomorrow is our launch for the book. Wait, I, I thought it was today. Today. It's today. Yes, it's today. Okay. <laughs> See, what do I know? <clears throat> so today is the official launch date of the paperback version of Dr. Gladys's book. Now. Yeah, and and it's, you know, I'm so uh, honored to have it be taken by people all around the world for their own, uh, their own uh, self-healing because people are so frightened and and uh, they don't know what to do. The world's scary place and all of that. And um, it's easy to get stuck in these scary places. 
And so fortunately, the message from the book has come about that you don't have to be stuck, you have a choice. And if you choose to reach beyond the fear and the pain, that you don't have to be stuck there, you can do that. It's a matter of choice. So anyway, I'm having the blessed opportunity of talking to people from all around the world. I never could have imagined this in my wildest imagination. And so I'm totally very grateful to have that message go out to help people around the world. So we have it. The book is published in how many languages, Bob, John? Well, um, we're not, not sure, but it's something like uh, 15. Wow. 15 different languages. And about 25 different countries. That's so, so great. That's so great. So, yeah. Just... Well, it's it's good to be able to talk to people in ways that allow them to heal because that's, you know, we're here to do something on this planet. And as we begin to reach for that, we can heal ourselves and heal, heal the earth around us. So... You know, I think that's really important to, to, to understand that we as individual people are the only living entities on this earth that have free choice and free will. So it's our responsibility and our privilege to use that choice to help Mother Earth and to help each other. Mm -hmm. For me, that's a, a huge, huge responsibility, but a huge joy. So somebody just commented, yes, but we need the awareness. Yes. And we need to know that it can happen, you know, but it won't happen if we don't look for it. Mm. You know, if you're always looking for what hurts you, it will continue to hurt you and you know and, and that that's very painful and you could get stuck but if you can reach and live through the hurt of the of what happens in life and reach to others with your light it it really does change the world for you do you, you yes Yes, yes. And um, somebody's just saying responsibility and privilege. Yes. That what that's we lack as humans. I don't Yes. Know. Yeah. Well, you know, well, I have this kind of it's just my idea. This isn't a theology or anything like that. Like when God whatever God represents to each one of us. Mm -hmm created the universe and it was gorgeous it was beautiful everything was perfect and then he created the human being and he said to us now you this is my my creation it's perfect it's absolutely the way it's supposed to be and i therefore give you who are the only living things on this planet that have free choice and free will and I give you dominion over this creation and we in our arrogance thought that we were given domination well so we, we kind of took over and said oh boy look at what we can do and we have done horrible things to mother earth and I think it's about time that we began waking up to our responsibility of dominion. And dominion means caregiving. Mm. 
It's our responsibility to take care of the earth. And if we can wake up to that and, and repeat that to ourselves and take care of Mother Earth, we're, we're going to be happier and she's going to be happier. And that's what this person said. Sorry, she said, or he said, sorry, that's what we lack as humans is understanding that huge responsibility and privilege is what yes. we have. Right. right. And, um, um, so what do you think about the people? There are people that I have come across that are just not open to any of that sort of languaging. Do you just let them go? Do you just say, oh, well, like, you know, you, you the saying you can lead a horse to water, but you can't make them drink. So you can expose people and they can either choose opt in or, or they just have an ignorance about them that they can't see that there's another way of being. And obvious and and the hope is that the way we live our lives can be an example to how they can live theirs it's not saying this this is the way it is well this is the way it is for me mm -hmm. and for my children and what uh, my community whatever but and if you choose to live this way, it's a wonderful way. And and it, it takes care of living things. And living things are not, they, living things as plants and so on, can't choose except in their own inner nature to do and be what they are, but they, they become what they become, we as humans can either support that, what be what they become, or we can destroy it. And um, so that's, I think, a huge responsibility that we can take just as far as we can go with it, you know, and, and you know, now look at what we were able to do with this talking to each other right now. Isn't this awesome? It is. We never could have done this before. I know. It's pretty cool. Um, so I have someone that's asking, I'm interested in hearing what's your view, what your view is on depression and not being able to move from trauma we have experienced. Start really, really looking past that so that you don't just get over it, you live through it. And as you take the steps, and the, the, each one of it is personally has to do this. You know, we teach our children how to walk. Well, there are certain aspects of our life where we can, we can get stuck unless, well, we can get stuck, and then we can take the stuck place and say, do I want to live this way? I, I had the uh, opportunity of, of um, finding my way past that stuck place when Bill asked me for, my, for a divorce after 46 years of marriage, and it was a specific time time in my life, I was coming from my office to my empty home. The only person in my home was my dog. And I was in the car and I was broken. I was screaming. I was yelling at the universe. I was telling the world how awful everything was. And all of a sudden, I stopped my car pulled off to the side of the road, and in my, my head, I heard the words, this is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. There was my, my, my name. And so I, I stopped and I 
looked at myself and I thought, am I going to spend the rest of my life feeling like this? Mm. And it was awful. It was the ugly. It was terrible. And I thought, no. And so when I went home, I changed my license plate to be, to read, be glad, thinking that every time I got into the car, I had to remind myself to be glad and not get trapped in that spot again. And also, and so I kept it that way for, I think it was 60 years uh, that I was still in practice here. And I figured that everybody that came in my uh, line of traffic that was behind me would see Be Glad. So it was my way of, of reaching past where I was stuck or reaching not, not past, reaching through where I was stuck mm -hmm. and into where I wanted to be because I wanted to continue to live my life. And so after all of that kind of thing, I finally was able to forgive my uh, ex-husband enough that I could write him a, a letter that said, thank you for giving me my independence. Mm -hmm. but, but it was a matter of living through it. It wasn't a matter of just saying, well, this is where I am and I'm stuck. Yes, I'm stuck and it's awful. And I really, really don't want to be here the rest of my life. And if you hadn't had that breaking moment where you were able to pull the car over and, you know, hear the voice of God, you know, would you have sought help? Would you, if you recognize that you're in that place that you don't want to be anymore and you want to live through it, like with your, your patients, would you suggest that they get therapy? Would you? Oh, yeah. absolutely. Yeah, if okay. you if you if you you find yourself stuck in a place, reach for help wherever it is. Mm -hmm. Start start singing songs that are helpful. Start doing things. Change something in your life that will start to move you into a different place, because there are people around this world, around all of us who are there as part of our in, environment to help us mm -hmm. live through the difficult places. Mm -hmm. There are also those there that help pull us back down into it. So we have to start choosing how we're going to go ahead with the world around us. Oh, so good. Somebody just said, amen, don't stay in negativity and sadness very long. Otherwise, you'll never come back out of it or it will be very difficult. And hang on, let me go back up here. There was some other things. Somebody saying, you put so much wisdom out. Thank you. Also read your book, Full of So Much Wisdom. Yes. Again, saying, thinking about and focusing on what you're grateful for changes your neural chemistry in your brain yes and you know just a simple thing like thanking for a meal mm -hmm. you no know, to stop long enough to say thank you for this food it catches you and says oh okay yes thank you right now it doesn't have to be a profound statement of, of your face or uh, anything else but it is acknowledgement of thank you for this it, it actually catches you and puts you back on the path mm -hmm. yeah it's so i i was just listening and reading up on um dr gabor monte i know i've mentioned him to you before who's um big in the world of trauma right, right. now and um it's just, just such great work and the book that's called the body keeps the score and how 
you know, just all that trauma, whether it's physical, emotional, like whatever it is, we store that in our bodies. And then if that's not expressed, then that can create illness. So when you had, you had cancer twice, right? Uh huh. And so you were pretty clear about where those came from. Oh yes, uh, certain traumas were going on in my life, and I had sort of personalized them. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, as I identified those and and did my little uh, sort of blind trip to, to what I could visualize, mm -hmm. and I was able to do that, it really helped me go through those. It, it was my body telling me certain things that I needed to do to get this aspect of it cleared up. And and it worked, you know. I, 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 I did the surgery. I had the radiation. I took care of the physical aspect of it. But then it was done. And, and you know, it's... Um, the whole process of healing is so uh, amazing. I had this friend, he was a lifetime friend, James, and he used to spend a lot of time in our home. He had, had dinner with us a lot. And then he went into dementia. So we got a nice place for him to live. And uh, and he was, he was okay there. So, one day I took a, a little plant over to him and and I it was just a little green plant and I put it in his window and I said, James, th this is a living plant and I'm giving it to you because I want you to love it and and take care of it because it's yours to take care of. Now I had no idea whether he was paying any attention to me or listening to what I was saying because he didn't respond any, but I left the plant there and did my little spiel about what it was. And a week later I came back and he met me at the door and he says, magic, magic. And I said, what? He says, look, and he grabs me and took me over to the, he says box and he points to, to, to the air conditioning box and he says, push this button, everything cool. Plant loves cool. And then he says, Pat, push this button, everything gets hot. Plant doesn't like hot. And I thought, my, how, how important this was to have him actually being in touch with that plant enough and taking care of it enough that 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 actual a love connection with a living a living thing which didn't know that you were connecting with it except that it knew that he was connecting you know that yeah. whole process that life process started up and he, there he was and such a simple thing to reach to another person with something that is actually living and loving and part of life itself. Yeah, I love that. It's so beautiful. Um, somebody saying have a beautiful day both of you women thank you for the wonderful live video today but so I don't really understand this Mary my friend recently sent me a picture of her and requested I send it back to her in 15 years it took me a minute to understand what she was requesting so I don't understand why she would want you to do that but maybe you can illuminate made on that. I don't know. Well, um, uh, you know, why not ask her what she means by that? 
right uh, pay more attention to what she's trying to tell you about what it is that she's struggling with mm -hmm. Oh, that's what I was going to ask you. Do you think that all illness has um, a, a emotional component behind it? I think that uh, at some level, absolutely. Yeah. Because it's the emotions are uh, um, manifested mm. in the way the body responds. And the body gives us the message. If we are feeling puny, the body's telling us that we're feeling puny, whatever you want us to take for, for that. But you know, it's that kind of a, of a thing that the body lets us know where we are. And if we can, if we're paying attention to our body, we can actually respond and 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 do what needs to be done in order to um recreate whatever the body needs in the way of its own juice so did you have you always uh utilized prayer or meditation where you're quiet enough to listen to the messages of your body? I've tr tried to, but there are times when life just gets too busy or something, and I have to remind myself <laughs> to do it, you know? Because it just, it's a matter of living life in a way that it's actually progressing and growing and we're re reaching for a uh, brighter, happier uh, place. And that's reaching out to others, reaching out to those who need help. If we're feeling pretty good or we're in a, in a good place, uh, let's not just reach out to so we can uh, show other people how good things could be. Although, if we can actually do our, something in our lives that does that, that's okay. But, but be in a place where what you're looking for is how can I help? Mm. How, how can I reach out with help? Not how can I change my neighbor? <laughs> you know, it's not that kind of thing because maybe your neighbor doesn't need to be changed. Right, maybe your neighbor is just a reflection of you. Absolutely. <laughs> so who knows? <laughs> right, right. But we um, all need help, that's the thing. We all need help and, and help is around us if we start looking, maybe just a little, little plant. Right, right, right. Uh, somebody is asking if you can talk to us about your daily practice. Do you eat breakfast? Do you fast? How much sleep do you get? Thus adds to your long, adding to your long life. Well, I'm grateful for each day. And I sleep, I try to sleep eight hours a day. Can't always do it. I mean, a night. <laughs> And I eat what I want to eat. And I'm not telling anybody else what they want to eat because if I was living in India right now, I would be eating something that would be quite different from what I'm eating this morning. So, you, you know, find what works for you, not what works for me. Mm. What works for me works for me. And... and and I, I have kids who, you know, what I wanted them to eat, they didn't eat or couldn't eat. I have a son who can't eat garlic. Well, you know, I like garlic. It's that kind of thing. Become aware of what your, your environment produces for you to 
make your own way of do of living your life mm -hmm. you're not you're not living my life you're living your life you can take the things i say and tuck it into your life any way you want to but but it's your choice to live your life in the way you want to live it and, it, and watch and watch what it does to your environment including your neighbors right so wouldn't you say that also then goes back to the you know taking time to see well how is how does that work for you how right. does eight hours of night of sleep work for you do you ha have a productive day how does it work for you having breakfast or not having breakfast? it's you know trial and error and paying attention to really how it makes you feel and how your body functions at its best you got it katie so well thank the good lord <laughs> um, so also being asked what are your thoughts on processed foods shouldn't we go back to growing our own food well, that'll be wonderful if, if you're in a position where you can do that right but if, if you're not if you're not do the best that you can and you know Find what works for you. Yes, I would. I pers I would say yes. You know, processed foods. They're not the best thing on the planet, but you know, if that's all you can get, then that's all you can get. Absolutely. If you're in a a situation where uh, that's you know you can't get anything else, right. food is food. And you're grateful for what, what it is, and that's it. You know, you take it. Because if you bless the food as you're eating it, it does more good for you than if you're saying, oh, this is horrible. Right. I have I have had to work with patients who have uh, not wanted the food that they were eating, and they eat it anyway because somebody told them that it was good for them. And then the whole time they're eating it, they're saying, this is bad for me. You know, well, think again. Right, right. Interesting. Yeah, mind, the mind does amazing things. Uh -huh. <laughs> um, so it's say again, for everybody who's on, because there's a bunch of new people that have just popped on and people are coming and going that because we didn't fully mention this but that today is the launch day of your paperback book the version yes of the book and it is in 15 languages um it is in 25 ish countries and what we're asking people to do is buy the book this week so if we get enough people to buy your paperback book within this week it will help move the needle towards having you uh reach the status of being a bestseller that's thank you and you're that, so good so, <laughs> thank uh, you yes it would just be so amazing to have mm -hmm. you be a best-selling book and have people get the message well, of course. Mm -hmm. yeah but the status is kind of fun and once you become a bestseller that's just one other thing that you can put behind the name of the book um right and yeah and, oh hang on things are okay i have it in hardback but i'll buy a couple in paperback and send it to my friends thank you very much <laughs> Thank you, thank you. My sister, uh, remind people of the name of the book again. It is the well lived life. Ben. The well lived no, life. Backwards myself. The well lived life by Dr. Gladys McGarry. Right. Um, and buy it on Dr. Gladys's website, which is drgladysmcgarry.com. No, oh, just gladysmcgarry.com. Oh, sorry, GladysMcGarry.com, and or you can buy it anywhere you buy books. Yep. So anywhere, Amazon, bookstore, wherever you can. So um, please pass that around. 
post it on Instagram if you wish, share, share a link. Um, let's, let's, let's get motivated and buy a bunch of copies of the paperback. <laughs> That's good for Katie. <laughs> well, yeah. And truly, you know, the bottom line is it is a beautiful message and you were helping people all over the world. And That's right. That's what the prayer is right. that, that's, that goes with it. Right. And that is so great. Um, somebody's saying, if you need a German speaker to read your book in German version as an audio book, I would love to do it for you. Oh, isn't that's that, that nice? We'll have to let our people know. So, that's a good to slave in Sure. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> Reach out to Rose Winters at the um, Foundation for Living Medicine. Right, right. And and tell her that that you would be willing to do that. That's a beautiful gift and offering. Absolutely, that's wonderful. Yeah. Um, someone saying this book is amazing. I felt how my energy was lifted just by reading it. Thank so you. That so that's an interesting piece too, that, you know, how I was asking the question of if there are people around you that, you know, they just can't see the light. They can't, they can't get out of their own way. They're really, really stuck in their way of being. And your comment was just, you know, live by example, show them how to be different. And even if it is something as simple as reading your book that lifts your energy, then you're walking around with an energy that has a little bit more lightness to it than you did before you read the book. Right, right, right. And, and that could be perfectly enough to shift somebody else's energy. Somebody else who's struggling with it. Right. You know, you, you do something that creates a spark of a light right you know i i like to think maybe i have a flashlight and i'm walking down a bat, dark path but all of a sudden I go, and the flashlight is good all of a sudden i see a little sparkle of light over on the left hand or right hand but it's not much of a sparkle but if i took my flashlight and put it with that it was a great you know great improvement light becomes much brighter mm -hmm. so it's just that adding what we can to each other's light that helps each other <sighs> that's so good i really do love the, your flashlight analogy because it's just so easy to grasp that concept and understand that all you really do have to worry about is turning on your own flashlight yep and, and, and keep it on the path right and keep it on the path and if you see another flashlight call it over yep. you know and, yep. and get lights to shine together so that the path is bigger and more people can see it and join the path so i really feel like that's what your book is your book is the flashlight that you have put out into the world right the my other books were all medical books but they didn't have the juice in them that this does. Mm. So it's kind of uh, needed to have that put into it. And it, it's different from the other books i would written. Mm -hmm. Although the, I do love that book that you wrote with your daughter. Yes. That... Oh, my daughter, Anna Leah wrote Bo Bo Born to Heal. Yes. <laughs> and if you and... have read that book, uh, Born to Heal is a beautiful book all about Dr. Gladys's life, starting from, from when she was a young person and On, took you. Yeah, the, yes. I think. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's, really, it's a lovely book. It's a lovely book. It is. And there's really great pictures in that book. Of, <laughs> yeah. You know, when you were growing up. And yeah, it's a it's really lovely. So. Get that one as well. Um, but I, I agree. I think your new book is, it is so interesting how, 
you know, you put a certain juice into it mm, to liven it, to, you know, like energize it in a way, like yeah. have it. It, it was something that I needed to say mm. that was not uh, appropriate in the medical books, but it was sort of stirred, uh, stored up so that it could come together in this book. And it's that the essence of what the whole love and life is about true healing. And the thing that I have seen since we've been doing this Instagram live for four years Isn't now. That wonderful? <laughs> um, that since the book has, I mean, you've always had just amazing energy, but I feel like the book and your, um, you know, like you said, you did a podcast every single day last week and you have a podcast every single day this week. And it's all as a result of this book getting out into the world that that has, has enlivened you. That has lifted oh, yeah. you in a way that just keeps your spark going. And so back to that question that somebody asked about what is it in your lifestyle that has you living this long, beautiful life? I would have to say just witnessing you and seeing the spark that is in your tone, it's in your eyes, it's in your being of being able to connect and share with all these people around the world, that's what's making it all happen for you. Or it's so adding, not making it all happen, but it's certainly adding to your juice in life. Well, you know, the physical aspect of it, I can't see enough to read, so I have to use the uh, audio books to get my information. But I, my, my eyesight has diminished because of glaucoma and uh, a blind, blind spot. In, uh, but my insight has improved. So it's it's a way of taking where life leads you and allowing that to be what is guide. Now, I walk with a walker. I don't go up steps because I told my daughter, who is a physician, that I wasn't going to do that anymore <laughs> and that kind of thing. So I've curtailed my activities to what my body is allowing me to do. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm grateful, very grateful for what I am able to do. And for actually, Katie, doing what we are able to do, you and I reaching people all around the world like this, it's awesome. Mm -hmm. It Absolutely is. And I am going to end this by asking you one question because I don't want to leave this 20 year old hanging. So somebody has asked, what advice do you have for a person in their 20s still trying to find their place? Don't give up. Keep looking because it's there. It's just hiding a little bit and making it hard for you but it's there, it's in your core, it's in who you are, and it knows it, and you know it, and somebody will point it out to you, or you'll turn around and all of a sudden, oh, this is it, you know? Or it may just creep into you, you find, look, that what you've been doing right along is exactly what it was supposed to be doing. Who knows? Right. You'll find out. Follow the breath. Crumbs. Yep. Yep. Uh, all right. Well, on that note, my dear, yes. I am to sign off and I'm going to just say one more time go buy the book. <laughs> please. please. Yes. Please share it with other people. Um, you know, buy a copy and send it to a loved one. 
Um, the, the paperback is out today uh, and we're trying to boost sales just, just because. Why not? The more, <laughs> more books Thank sales you. Pass, Thank you. The more people are reading it. So right. um, anyway, so lots of love is coming your way. Lots of hearts are going up the yes. side. Yes, we yes. Love Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Love you all. Yes. Yes, we love you all. Thank you for being here every week, whenever we show up, which is almost every week. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. And, and, uh, and we will see you again next Tuesday. Absolutely. Uh, all right, Gladys, you have a fabulous you week. I love too. you, John. So grateful. Thank you for always being the right-hand navigator here. <laughs> You're welcome. Okay, bye, everybody. Bye.